Hello everyone, my name is Keely. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. It has been quite some time since I have filmed or uploaded a video. It's been a little over a month because I am now a full-time high school English teacher and so I haven't had time to film or when I have had time I just haven't felt like it. So I've decided that if I want to continue filming, I just need it to be more chill and like not so serious. Because I mean, it's not super serious anyway, it's just my thoughts on books and we're having fun here. So I'm hoping to film a lot more and catch up on the videos that I missed out on. So today we're going to talk about all the books that I read in the month of August. Now since I have started teaching full time, my reading has been cut down significantly. So in August I read 12 books, which is still really, really great because school didn't start until like halfway through August, so the first half I was reading Reading, like my normal speed and then the second half I really slowed down but I'm still trying to get this rom reading momentum going so we're gonna go ahead and talk about all the books like I said I want to keep this more chill so I didn't even pull them off my shelf because I'm too lazy so I'm just gonna be inserting pictures of all the books I read and as always I'm gonna talk about them in the order that I read them in so the first book I read in August was Malice House by Megan Shepard, and in this book we follow a woman named Haven. Now Haven's father has just passed away, and he was one of the most famous authors of all time, so she has inherited his old creepy house that lives on a cliffside. So she moves to this town, she moves into the house, and she discovers an unpublished manuscript of her father's and towards the end of his life he started kind of spouting this nonsense about the house being haunted about these creatures and she's like yeah okay whatever but as she starts reading this manuscript some creepy things start happening in the house now that's all I'm going to say about the story and it goes off the walls from there. This went in a completely different direction than I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but it definitely wasn't this story. This book goes more a, a more of a fantasy route and I enjoyed it, but I also felt like this book was way too long and I would have enjoyed it a lot more if it was shorter. But I understand the length because a lot of the stuff that was happening needed to be fleshed out. Um, but I ended up giving this one three stars. It was okay. I was just getting kind of tired of it by the end. There is a sequel to this and I haven't decided for sure if I'm going to continue it or not. The next book I read was a reread for me and that is The Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan. This is book two in the Percy Jackson series. I started rereading the series because the TV show comes out in December and the trailer was just released and I sobbed. I am not kidding, I sobbed. Now this book is one of my favorites in the series. I absolutely love this one so much, especially the scene when they're in the cave and the whole nobody thing happens. I think about that scene almost as much as men think about the Roman Empire. So I give this one a 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare, and this was my first historical romance. So, in this book we follow a duke, and he is really scarred, he doesn't go out much, people haven't really seen him, but he really really needs an heir. So one day this seamstress shows up at his door and he's like, you know what, she's gonna do, I need an heir, and he tells her, we're gonna get married, but we're only gonna be husband and wife by night, and as soon as I get an heir, we're never gonna share a bed again. <gasps> I love this book so so much. I cannot even tell you. This is one of the like most romantic things I've ever read. I was blushing. I was kicking my feet in the air, twirling my hair. I love these characters so much. Emma is so fierce and I love her and she like just doesn't stand for being mistreated and she's awesome. I also love the Duke and the feelings and emotions he goes through throughout the story. The setting was great. I love the historical vibes. I gave this one five stars. So right after that, I jumped into book two, The Governess Game by Tessa Dare. And once again, I love this one so much. So the hero and heroine we follow in this one are different than the first book, but the heroine is friends with the girl in the first one as well. So we kind of follow a friend group. Now, the guy in this one, Chase, he is not my ideal type, but Tessa Dare wrote him in a way that I still completely fell in love with him. And then the girl, Alex, I saw so much of myself in her that I just really, really connected to the story. This book also has the single dad trope which I haven't really read before but I really really liked how it was done in this so once again five stars the next book I read was The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. I read this for an in real life book club I just joined. Unfortunately, I got really sick when the meeting happened so I didn't get to go, but I was still excited to read this because I've been looking forward to it forever. So we follow this man named Ted, I believe, and he's in an airport and he meets this woman named Lily. Now they're talking about the, at the airport bar and they're telling each other these deep secrets about their life and Ted tells Lily that he is angry at his wife and he hates her and wants her dead and Lily says, I can help with that. So they start planning how to kill Ted's wife. 
Now, I've heard great things about the story and unfortunately it felt really flat for me because of the writing. I did not like the writing. It was very cold in a way that it just didn't make the story flow. Nothing felt smooth, it just felt kind of stunted and I just could not get along with the writing. I also was so confused at the end of this book because I literally thought I was missing a part of it. I messaged somebody and was like, is that really how it ends? Because it wasn't a good ending and not in a way that a cliffhanger is, but in a way that I felt like a part of the story was missing. So overall, I ended up giving this one three stars because I liked the plot, but the writing was just too dense. The next book I read was The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. This is book three in this series. And in this book, we follow a girl named Penelope who is animal crazy. So she rescues and saves a ton of animals and unfortunately her aunt does not think that this is very ladylike and tells her that she needs to get rid of all of her animals and move back home. Now next door to her there is this duke that has a really bad reputation and he is fixing up this house and he thinks oh there's a single lady next door that's going to raise the value of this house. But she is not wanting to do what he does and she needs to get rid of these animals so she can stay in that house and he goes you know what? I will help you because he wants her to stay so he can sell his house for more. And of course, they fall in love. Now, this one was my least favorite of the series so far just because these characters are my least favorite, but I still had a great time. I love Tessa Dare and her writing and her steamy scenes, and I gave this one four stars. Next, I reread The Titan's Curse by Rick R. Warden. This is book three in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. Like I said, this is a reread for me, but this is still my least favorite book in the series. Still love it, but I gave it four stars. The next book I read was Queen of Myth and Monsters by Scarlett St. Clair. This is the sequel to King of Battle and Blood, which I absolutely loved. It is a vampire fantasy romance series where we have a human girl and a vampire king and they have an arranged marriage to try to save her kingdom. And I seriously love the first one. This sequel, hated. One of the worst books I've read absolutely hated it. Nothing, absolutely nothing made sense in this book and it felt like a completely different story than the first one and I found myself so annoyed with the main characters which is weird because in the first book I love them so much. I just truly hated this book. There was nothing redeeming or good about it um, and I gave it one star. The next book I read was Five Total Strangers by Natalie D. Richards. In this book we follow a group of people who are catching a ride together because they are stranded in the airport because of a snowstorm but they have to get home so they all decide to ride share and all of them are strangers and as we are going along this trip we realize a lot of them have several secrets. I also hated this book. It was so boring to me and I also felt so mad by the end of it and I just cannot stand when books make me mad so I just really didn't like it and again gave it one star. So next I reread The Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Riordan. Like I said, reread for me so I knew it wasn't going to be one star and this is actually one of my favorite books in the entire series so I gave this one five stars. Of course I love The Maze so much. The next book I read was The Call by Peter O'Gillen and I randomly picked this up because this book was in my classroom and I had heard about it years ago and I'm so glad I did. So we live in kind of a post-apocalyptic dystopian world that is set in Ireland actually and decades and decades, hundreds of years ago actually, the Irish banished the Fae to live in another world kind of like underground. But now the Fae, the fairies have discovered how to steal people from the real world and take them to their world. So every so often people disappear and they get called for three minutes and in that time they go through torture and run for their lives from the Fae and if they come back after three minutes they're either dead or alive. So we follow a group of people who are training at this academy to try to survive their call. Okay this book incredible. I am not a fairy or fae person, especially when it is romanticized, but in this case they are evil, they are brutal, and they are torturing little people everywhere and I love that so much because it shows the true nature of the fae and the world that they go to that the fae actually live in is insane and crazy and descriptive and I would never want to go there, but it's so interesting because you never know who's going to get called next. It's also so cool with the school setting because they are literally training and fighting to stay alive and I just absolutely loved it. And we also get to see when they are called and how they survive or they don't survive and they're all killed in brutal, unique ways. I love this book so much. One of my favorites of the year so far and I gave it five stars. 
The next book I read was Blindsided by Karen Slaughter. This is book one in the Grant County series. And to all of you out there who said I was gonna love Karen Slaughter, you were so right. So this first book, we follow a woman named Sarah and she is the town doctor and coroner. And her ex-husband is actually like the police chief or he's some high up in the police. And so they're having to work together sometimes because she is the coroner and he is solving crimes. Now, in this town, there are some brutal killings going around and so they are having to try to figure out who the serial killer is. I love this so much. It is so gory and so brutal and if you haven't figured it out by now, I love gory and brutal. I cannot wait to continue the rest of the series. This book is pretty chunky. It's like almost 500 pages and I read it so quickly even while teaching because I could not put it down. I really love the characters and I think like Sarah and her ex-husband are going to kind of refall in love throughout the series which I'm not sure how I feel about because her husband is her ex-husband just kind of trash based on what she used to go through um but it was on the edge of my seat crazy action happening and also a mystery throughout it i just really loved it and gave it five stars so those are all the books that i read in the month of august if you've made it this far in the video go ahead and leave the apple emoji since i just started teaching and back to school let me know your favorite book you read in august i would love to know that is it for this video thank you so much for watching as always all my social media links will be down below and i'll see you next time bye